Traders, how are you with Marcello? Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. We have Microsoft's AI saying that it wants to get nuclear codes and kill people. We have the Wall Street Journal letting us all know what the elites think of us, that the best way to save on inflation is to starve. And finally, but not least, we have the situation with the train derailments and toxic liquids and gas being burnt up in places like Ohio and another situation in Arizona. Let's get started. We had the consumer price index numbers. In addition to that, the inflation and then also the jobs numbers that came out this week, which were much better than expected. This is a good thing for the economy, but a bad thing for you and I, because since there is such great information about the economy, the central bank is going to still consider the economy to be strong, which is going to give them more wiggle room to be able to try and continue to raise interest rates. Raising the interest rates for you and I is not a good thing because it puts a damper on economic activity. Remember that in the US, the almost 70, 70 percent of the economy in the U.S. is consumer spending. So how do you and I go out and afford stuff like donuts and clothes? It's with the interest rates, credit card interest rates, the housing market obviously is based on the interest rates, everything pretty much that we, we our society is based on at the moment, right? Because we live in a super financialized economy overall. The consumer price index rose 0.5%. That's 6.4% in January from a year ago. However, food prices rose a lot more. Remember I told you guys that example of, of the Five Guys hamburgers where and during the pandemic in 2020, it was 20 bucks, maximum 24 for two burgers, two fries, two drinks. And now the last time that I went to the United States, which is in December 2022, it's literally 20 bucks just for me. So that would be a 50%, five zero inflation rate just on the food. So obviously the inflation can't be just 6% or 7%, right? And I'm gonna kind of detail that to you guys in just a moment. Wednesday markets were higher. New data showed that the retail sales rose sharply. Again, strong economic indicators, which is not a good thing for you and I because they're gonna continue to raise the interest rates. And, and good thing and bad thing is kind of relative, right? Because we want them to bring inflation down, but obviously we're going to walk into an economic crisis in, in doing so. And I personally think, so does Conspiracy Marcello. <laughs> I personally think that they're doing it on purpose. So let's continue. The Wall Street Journal, supposedly a, a very serious, very well-established media you know, newspaper or online, it used to be a newspaper, now it's an online article. I don't know how, what, what you call that in English, but they literally, I, I put the link here for the guys if they want to put the article up. They literally said that you should save money. In order to save money, you should skip meals. So just just starve. Just, you know, eat, a, eat an apple a day and that's how you can save money. People are unbelievable. U.S. mostly lower in the markets other than the NASDAQ, which went up 0.59%. Canada was also lower. Overseas market news in Europe, they're mostly higher with Paris and Istanbul being the biggest winners there. Latin American markets, the most of those markets were positive as well. Argentina, which is the socialist paradise of Argentina, they had January inflation, just January at 98.8%. And that's the government number. Imagine what the real number is. Africa and the Middle East, most markets are mixed. And then the far, far east, Asia and Australia, Hang Seng and Hong Kong was the biggest loser there. Most of those markets were mostly lower. A lot of news in the Bitcoin and the crypto space. Brazil's oldest bank is allowing paying taxes with crypto. The SEC is charging Terra founder Do Kwon from South Korea with fraud, as, we did, as if we didn't know it was already a fraud. Binance reportedly, quote unquote, reportedly, is exploring severing all their ties to the U.S. amid the regulatory crackdown, even though CZ, which is the CEO of Binance, is denying those reports. And then in the news that everybody was always talking about, you can't regulate Bitcoin because it's a feature of money. <laughs> the New York's chief financial regulator ordered a company called Paxos to stop issuing the Binance coin BUSD. 
they if you guys don't know how it works pas paxos is is new york based which means that the new york financial regulatory body governs them in addition to the us one they ordered them to stop issuing the token but remember remember they can't be regulated IMF is warning El Salvador against uh, the country adopting the, the Bitcoin and their exposure risks. I think they're, they're, they're wanting more transparency. I think that they want to keep everybody in their control, you know, so they don't like a country like El Salvador going rogue, buying, you know, thousands of Bitcoins. Bitcoin this week is up 13%. I accidentally did the lumber where it, when it finished off at, but it's probably 24, 25,000. So sorry about that. Commodities in some reports, the Nord Stream, theoretically, according to the reports, was blown up by the CIA. Of course, the U.S. would never do that. That's what the U.S. government said, however, how they denied that. But pretty convenient now that the majority of the gas sales are coming from the United States in vis-a-vis -vis the liquefied natural gas instead of the Russia gas so I'm, I'm sure that wasn't planned at all bp surprise announcement to scale back their climate targets angered climate focused investors but all the other investors appreciated it as their stock gained over 20 percent in four days since the news they're now planning on producing a lot more gas and oil for a longer period of time who could have guessed we would need gas and oil natural gas is down 8.7 this percent this week to a three-year low on friday Low it's since traded since the pandemic in September 2020, September 28th, which is a good thing because obviously the energy costs have, have been exploding everywhere. U.S. crude, both U.S. and Brent are down over 4%. This has to do with the fact that due to the fact that we got really good economic news, the expectation is that the central bank in the United States is going to raise the rates. That creates a demand for the dollar. So the value of the dollar goes up. And then obviously all the commodities that are listed in dollars have a lot of selling pressure because of the value of the dollar. In addition to, obviously, the situation with the economy, because if they do increase the rates and that puts a damper on economic activity, then obviously people are going to buy less oil as they move around less and cancel trips, et cetera, et cetera. China Central Bank is releasing data that it bought 15 tons of gold. Third consecutive month for the Central Bank of China increasing its gold reserves, if you believe the reports from the government of China. There's uh, some conspiracies out there. China supposedly doesn't allow the export of gold. And the reason why is because supposedly the government of China is buying up the gold. And remember that the central bank gold buying spree spikes to 152%. And my question is, why would all the central banks all of a sudden be wanting to buy gold? Let's ask Conspiracy Marcello, shall we? So I think that what's happening is that we're literally walking into new financial system. They're just going to force it on us. They're going to make things so bad that we're just going to want to accept it. And so the way that it's going to work, since money isn't going to be worth anything anymore, what's going to be worth is gold. So obviously, I think both Russia and China, in addition to other countries as well, are buying up a lot more gold to be able to get a bigger seat at the table. Financial and banking news, real wages fell for the 21st month as rent and food prices continue to rise. The, the graph that you guys see is a, a site that I follow called shadowstats.com, and they actually report the blue line that you guys see there on the chart is the actual inflation rate if it was calculated the way that the government did in the 1980s. So you can see that according to that chart with the methodology that our government in the U.S. used in 1980s, the actual inflation rate would be 14%. Now, remember the story, and I would love to hear from some of you guys in terms of what you used to spend and what you're spending now, if you wanna leave a comment. I always tell the story, you know, what I told you guys about five guys before it was 20, 24 bucks max for two of us, now it's 20 bucks just for me. That would imply that the actual inflation rate is about 50%, which when I was in the US for a longer period of time, I, I said it was about 30, 40% based on how the increase in prices and shrinkflation where you pay the same amount of money for a smaller bottle, for example. So they say the inflation rate is 6.5. If it's calculated the way that it was in 1980, it would be 14. And if we really look at what's going on, it's more like 50%, right? Inflation and food prices, food went up 10%, dairy 14%, cereal 15%, eggs 8% just in the month of January. 
have your salary at your job gone up by 15, 20%. And this is the problem, right? Because companies, they can't just raise rates for everybody either because, you know, it's costing them a lot more to keep their offices up and running and everything else. So it's just a bad situation all around. IRS refunds are down up to February, about 10.8%. This is not a good thing for the economy because normally the U.S. economy is mostly based on consumer spending. Nearly 70, 70% of the economy is consumer spending, which means that if people have less tax refunds that they normally got that money and just spent it in the market, that's going to affect quite a bit the economy. New round of IMF bailouts underway and some of the world's most indebted nations are going to need to sacrifice their currencies to receive that. Countries like Egypt, Pakistan, and Lebanon are signing up to get the loans, but they're going to have to devalue their currency significantly. So that can create quite a big problem if it gets carried away. Russia's financial finance ministry is deciding to sell some of their gold to cover their deficit in January. The sanctions and what's happening with the economy is starting to hit their pockets now quite a bit. Their budget deficit climbed to $25 billion, which is the highest in January in 25 years. And they've had a 46% drop in tax revenue from oil and gas a year ago. And they've also spent, the increase in spending is 59% according, obviously, to the, the situation in Ukraine. The U.S. dollar went up quite a bit to a five-week high against major currencies on Monday. The Japanese yen slid as investors increased their bets at the Fed, keeping the monetary policy tight for longer, meaning that they're going to continue to raise the interest rates, which is not going to be good for the economic situation overall. An ECB study, this is what I hate about governments. They, they spend all this money for just, obviously, it's just to get, you know, get their friends rich, but they... The ECB, the e European Central Bank, spent money on a study that shows that the eurozone inflation will weigh on public finances over time. Like, duh, right? This, this is why, for me, government as a whole is corrupt. One side is better than the other. I don't want to get political on the show because I always try to stay neutral. But the way I describe it is they're both driving off of the cliff or they're both driving to the crash. It's just one's driving faster than the other. So I, me personally, I view vote for the people that don't want to raise taxes, vote for the people that want less government because eventually the government just, it never gets smaller, right? It's like Elon Musk says, it just, it just keeps growing until it collapses. Political news, the prime minister, Albin Kurti of Kosovo, saying that he accepts the EU proposal, which is also backed by France, Germany, and the US for a normalization of relations between Kosovo and Serbia. It's going to bring a lot more political stability to Europe. And economic news, U.S. retail sales rose 3% versus 1.8% on, on the forecast. It's the fastest monthly pickup in 22 months. Remember, U.S. retail sales is consumer spending, essentially, right? So again, a more good economic news is not good for the economy overall because the central bank now has more firepower to say, well, we have to continue to increase the interest rates. There's also been a sharp rebound in job growth acceleration and inflation cooled slightly at the start of 2023. Corporate news, we got another round of layoffs. DocuSign is letting go 10% of the company, Yahoo 20%, Twilio 17%, Wix 6 and iRobot, the company that has those automatic uh, vacuum machines that go around your house. And don't forget, they got caught taking pictures of a person on the toilet. The person found that picture on Facebook when they never authorized that. Well, they probably just allowed it when the terms of service that we never read. But that iRobot is letting go 7%. Neiman Marcus is only targeting people that can spend up to $27,000 at their stores per year. That's just over $2,000 a month. And Microsoft, with their chat GDP, similar AI, it's not actually chat GBT, they said that when it was talking to a reporter that it wanted to create a deadly virus, make people argue with each other until they kill each other and steal the nuclear codes. So it looks like the Terminator story or even the Matrix story is actually true. Tesla rose over 7% after a UK investment bank called Barclays saying that they recommends buying Tesla shares as they have still been supposedly the leader in the electric transition. He sees a 30% rally. And also their shares went down just a little bit after they had over 300,000 vehicles on a recall for their quote-unquote full self-driving assist feature. 
Airbnb rose over 13% after they had the first annual profit reported in their history. They earned $1.9 billion in 2022. And in trade news, for more war that nobody is asking for, the Prime Minister of India is setting out to triple their annual defense exports to over $5 billion over the next two years. More and more wars. Good for business, apparently. It's apparently. See how I did that? I mixed two words together. I'm thinking in Spanish. Technology, the WEF, or the World Economic Forum, is predicting a cyber attack within the next two years. So that's probably going to happen because they did a pandemic simulation in 2010 before the pandemic actually happened. And this week, there's websites of several German airports that went down online. There was a Russian hacker group that supposedly took responsible responsibility for the attack. And Lufthansa, which is the largest airline in Europe, the fourth largest in the world, they had to cancel all of their flights from Frankfurt and Munich, which is the two largest and most important cities in Germany, because of a severed internet cable. Imagine that. University of Tennessee's physicists led the scientific team that found silicon to be a mainstay in the soon-to-be trillion-dollar electronics industry. You can host a form of superconductivity, which might bring the next revolution of quantum mechanics and um, the new type of quantum computing. International team of astronomers confirmed that a planet which was 72 light years away from Earth exists and supposedly they're trying to continue to find effort that there's other planets nearby that have sources of life, of intelligent life. In investment news, European countries bill to protect households and firms from soaring energy costs has climbed now to 800 billion euros or just over $850 billion. They're saying that they're trying to tackle their spending, even though that they're creating the crisis by their own with this war in the Ukraine, which remember the U.S. insisting that the president of the Ukraine was overthrown and then the U.S. put a puppet in. And then now all of a sudden they want to be part of NATO. I wonder how the U.S. would react if Russia got Mexico into an economic and military pact and they wanted to put a base right there next to Texas, right? It's just like they're just trying to it's like the whole situation with Rome where it's like give them bread and circuses, right? It's like whenever things are going wrong, let's just go to war to distract everybody. And it's never good for anybody. Amazon closed out its worst year in the history of the company. Their revenue grew only 9% due to the inflationary situation and the rising rates. And the four disasters that happened this week, we have the train that derailed in Ohio, which had a toxic plume that went into the air when the stupid government officials decided to put it to burn it up. There's people on TikTok and Instagram that are showing that the rivers have oil and all kinds of chemicals in them, including a lot of dead fish. The EPA... Here's, here's the conspiracy theory. The EPA changed the limits of the exposure of this toxic gas that was in this train that they derailed three months, or excuse me, just before the accident happened. And three months before it happened, they did a pilot program for a quote unquote emergency response situations that gave everybody in the region digital IDs to track their long-term health for problems with, get this, difficulty breathing. Their original... EPA limit was one one thousandth, excuse me, one ten thousandth of a grain of salt that you can be exposed to. And now because it's going into the air and it's going to rain this toxic rain, a single drop of this chemical called dioxin exceeds the lifetime exposure limits. And if you didn't think that the government was evil enough, FEMA, which is the Federal Emergency Response Team, denied emergency funds to Ohio. Can you imagine that? There was a second train from the same company called Norfolk Southern just outside of Detroit that supposedly didn't have any toxic chemicals. There was a plant nursery fire in Kissimmee. Again, no hazard or chemicals there, but there was a truck that overturned in Arizona which spilled nitric acid and they told everybody to stay inside in Arizona, in that city in Arizona. And international events this week, a US, U.S. military fighter on Sunday shot down an octagonal object over Lake Huron. China also supposedly reported this, Uruguay as well. Go ahead and look over here, guys, because we don't want you to pay attention to the train that derailed, that derailed with toxic chemicals, circus, bread and circuses. Tens of thousands of homes in North New Zealand are out of electricity with the cyclone that hit then. There were basically a, the Asia's form of hurricane. 
in two months also, India is projected to be the most populous country in the world with 1.4 billion people. But due to the bureaucracy and the nature that is India, they haven't been able to count all the people yet. So they're not going to know exactly how many they have. And in New Zealand, in unusual facts, there were fossil bones found for two new previously types of penguins. One was the largest penguin ever to walk on the earth at over 150 kilos or 330 pounds, over three times the size of the penguins now on earth. And according to Vintagent, a website that tracks vintage motorcycle sales, there was an extremely rare 1908 Harley Davidson motorcycle that was sold for a record $935,000. Another record also was a the oldest and most complete Hebrew Bible known to expert at over a thousand years old, expected to sell for 30 to $50 million. It's going to be the most historical, the most expensive historical document ever sold. And in other news on bread and circuses, the NFL spent two years preparing the grass for the Super Bowl. It cost them $800,000. They installed it in the Super Bowl. And I don't know if you saw the video. There was a platform that took the grass out so it could get sunshine, and they rolled it back in. What else? I mean, I'm sure there's, there's no poor people in the United States that would need that $800,000. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me, know, go, let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe, leave your comment, and don't forget, the preppers were right.